Hello, this is uh, Silvia Pavoni, Investment Editor of the Bank, reporting from the first official day of the Inter-American Development Bank meeting in Montevideo, Uruguay. And I'm talking to Ilan Goldfein, the Chief Economist for Itaú Unibanco. Ilan, thank you for speaking to me. Um, the agenda of the IDB meeting this year is uh, very much concentrated on the issue of infrastructure and public-private partnerships, but I wonder whether there are also other topics um, that uh, bankers and economists and uh, government officials are discussing besides the, uh, let's call it the, the official themes. Um, so what have you been talking to um, with your contacts today? Uh, well, um, uh, we have been asked quite a bit about the relationship between the southern corn countries, uh, Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Paraguay. They want to know if uh, the Mercosul is still strong and going, whether there are uh, new protectionism, protection measures coming both from the side of Argentina or maybe Brazil. And we are in a, we are in a moment where uh, there is exchange of appreciation, uh, a challenge for competitiveness in the countries, and there's always pressures to some protection. Uh, the response of the countries is to try to avoid depreciation through controls, through intervention, and hopefully less through protectionism. So you're positive that uh, the right measures are going to be taken then in the short term, or do we need to, uh, to, to wait a little bit longer for that to happen? Um, I, I, I believe we are now in a, more in, in, in a period which is more delicate. Uh, we need to pass this acute moment, especially in Brazil. Brazil is uh, recovering from a slow growth last year. As the economy recovers, the industry will, will, will grow, will sell more, uh, and this will uh, somehow diminish the pressures to uh, uh, intervention and protection. Um, and uh, Brazil clearly is uh, a country that has attracted lots of investors' interest in the past, and this interest has, uh, as we said, uh, put up uh, capital controls. Um, but at the same time, we are seeing that the government is trying to make sure that uh, the long-term investors um, are still able to put money in the country to bet on the long-term pr prospects of the country. And they introduced some legislation, such as, for example, infrastructure bonds, which uh, has recently been passed. They should encourage this. Um, what are your views on uh, on this move? I believe it's a very good mood, move in the sense that uh, there are a lot of projects uh, in Latin America, a lot of investment. There is a need for funding. There is a need for external savings channeled towards these new projects, uh, which is beneficial for both sides. Investors can get a hefty return because those are profitable projects. And uh, the economies uh, can benefit from uh, uh, getting funding for these investments. The bonds are a good development in the sense that they are issued with uh, less controls, less taxes, which means that it could attract investors without all the problems associated with all other uh, flows like the hot money. And uh, um, another important issue for Latin America, and uh, also in particular for Brazil, is the relationship and the trade flows with uh, China, uh, who is in Asia in general, who, which has um, suffered a bit of a slowdown in economic terms. Um, is this a worry, or um, uh, how is this going to affect the future trade flows between the two regions? Uh, in the last uh, several years, the relationship between uh, Latin America and Brazil in partic particular, and China has, uh, China and other Asian economies has increased. Uh, a lot of the exports uh, have been uh, redirected uh, uh, towards Asia, uh, which means that the growth uh, of China and the growth of other Asian economies has benefited uh, Latin America. Now we have seen, we are seeing China decelerating in, uh, in, uh, in, in our view, this is uh, not a bad uh, phenomenon. Uh, we need China to grow at sustainable levels. We need China to grow for longer, for more years, uh, not only for one or two years, then to have a sudden stop, which is always uh, a problem. The one of the main risks of uh, Latin America is the hard, hard landing of China. 
Um, and lastly, um, Brazil has been growing at uh, really high rates, um, although of course now it's slowing down a bit as, as, as the rest of the region. And, as, um, and, and uh, with the economy growing, also the banking sector and uh, the uh, number of uh, the part of the population which is now uh, accessing banking products and credit has also expanded to the point that, of course, recently some have been worrying about uh, sort of overheating um, of this uh, space. Um, were these concerns justified, or um, are we still far from the points um, where everybody should get worried about how much the level of credit is growing um, as a percentage of GDP? Uh, the level, the credit has a percentage of GDP in the case of Brazil is around 46%. So looking only at the credit as a proportion of GDP is still at levels where you can still grow. It's much lower than uh, other countries, other major markets, and other advanced economies too. The issue is the debt burden, because interest rates are quite high in the case of Brazil. So for a given uh, debt, you pay more because the interest is larger, is higher. Uh, has uh, Brazil continues to grow? Has Brazil continues to see its economy improve in the sense that we, we may see interest rates converge to, inter to international levels? Has interest rate converged, the debt burden will diminish, and then you'll have space for more credit growth. So you remain optimistic then about your country and about Latin America? As they now say, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you, it was a pleasure. <laughs>